I had a patient that came in complaining of brown vaginal discharge for about a week. She was really anxious about it because there was a really foul smell. She was shocked to learn that the cause of the vaginal discharge was. Let's talk about brown period blood. I get asked about this a lot because people really are wondering if this is normal or if it's a sign that something is wrong. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what normal brown period blood is and why you have it. At the end, however, I'm gonna talk about when it's abnormal and what you should do about it. So be sure to watch to the end so you don't miss anything important. But first, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. You're watching In The Pink and if you're new here, In The Pink means in good health and spirits. So if you like being healthy and happy, click subscribe because you're in the right place. So in order to answer this, let's go over what your period blood is. So it's a mixture of blood and endometrial tissue. We call it menstrual flow or menstruation. In your cycle, after you've had a period, the inside lining of your uterus, called the endometrium, slowly gets thicker to get ready for implantation for a fertilized egg. If your egg doesn't get fertilized, it won't implant, and at the end of the cycle, the endometrium and blood sloughs off and comes out in the vagina, what you know as your period. Now imagine you accidentally cut your finger and it starts to bleed. What color is the blood? Kind of a bright red, right? So it's bleeding and you don't want it to get everywhere, so what do you do? You put a band-aid on it. Next day, the bleeding stops and you take off the band-aid. Is the blood on the band-aid bright red anymore? No, it's a very dark brown. The reason is because when blood touches oxygen, it oxidizes and it turns from a normal red color to dark brown. And the same thing happens to you with your period blood. So at first, when you're having your period, the blood is new and it's red, but the last of the blood up inside the uterus gets older and it has oxidized and it turns brown and that's it. The blood is simply just older blood. So it's very common for the blood to be dark brown at the end of your period. And some women even continue to spot brown blood for a few days after their period is pretty much done. Now let's talk about brown blood in the middle of your cycle. So in the middle of your cycle, on average, around day 14 of your cycle, you ovulate, which means an egg is released from one of your follicles. It travels down your fallopian tube and into the uterus, where, like I mentioned earlier, if it's been fertilized, it will implant, and if not, it will come out with your endometrial lining and blood. When the follicle releases the egg, there can sometimes be a little bit of bleeding from the follicle itself. The blood also travels down the fallopian tube, the uterus, and then out through your vagina. Now, often, ovulation blood is like pink because it's a little bit of blood mixed with vaginal discharge, but if the blood takes time to come out, it could be dark brown. Usually ovulation bleeding though is very light. Now let's talk about when you need to be concerned for brown spotting. But before I do, if you think this video is helping you and you want more informative videos like this, let me know by hitting the like button and of course subscribe. It lets me to know that you would like me to continue putting out this type of content. So reasons for abnormal brown discharge. First off, sexually transmitted infections can cause vaginal discharge. The colors could be green and they could be yellow and of course, brown. Now often discharge from an STI can have other symptoms associated with it like itching, burning, or an odor. If you're concerned about an STI, you need to get seen by your healthcare provider. Another option, if you don't want to do that, is just order a home test kit. They mail the kit to your home so you can check for an infection yourself. Pretty cool. I'll link to it in the video description down below. Next, you could have PID, which is short for pelvic inflammatory disease, which is an infection of the female reproductive organs. Symptoms could be pelvic pain, fever, pain with intercourse, pain with urination, smelly discharge, and of course, brown discharge. If you have these symptoms, you definitely need to see your healthcare provider and be evaluated. If they think you have PID or pelvic inflammatory disease, they will want to give you antibiotics. Next, foreign body inside your vagina. Most often the culprit, a tampon. So if a tampon accidentally gets forgotten up there and stays up there for a day or more, you could definitely notice two things. Number one, dark brown or blackish discharge, and number two, a really foul odor. If this happens to you, you aren't the first, I guarantee it. I have taken out plenty of retained tampons from my patients over my career. It can be easy to forget, but try not to. Keeping a tampon in for more than eight hours can increase your chances of having something called toxic shock syndrome. To go over it briefly, symptoms of toxic shock syndrome are fever, uh, rash, body aches, lightheadedness, vomiting, diarrhea. Worsening symptoms can be confusion and seizures. Any symptoms like that, you need to go to the ER. 
Next, PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. It can cause difficulty with weight loss, acne, less frequent and irregular bleeding and spotting. And the spotting can often be dark brown. Also, an ectopic pregnancy can cause brown discharge. If you've missed a period or if you've had a positive pregnancy test and you start to experience pelvic pain and brownish watery discharge, you need to see your healthcare provider right away. Finally, cervical cancer. Now, if you are having brown discharge, please know that it is very, very unlikely that you have cervical cancer. I'm only mentioning it to be thorough, but I don't want you to get nervous thinking that you could have cancer. Just make sure you're doing your routine pap tests as directed by your healthcare provider. So back to my patient that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. She ended up having a retained tampon. I removed it right there at the office. It took about 30 seconds. We did a little something to help prevent infection and problem was solved. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, down here, I'm gonna put my video where I talk about if it's normal to have vaginal discharge every day. Click on that video and I will see you over there. But if you have a history of yeast infections before, you know what it feels like, and you're sure that what you're having now is a yeast infection, then this is a really good place to start. So.